Hello! Um, so this is, uh, part... What is it? Part 13, I think? Uh, the penultimate part of Sonic Superstars. So this, like I said in at the end of last video, this is going to be a little bit different. Uh, this and the next video are going to be more post-commentary and just me, like episode 9 was. Um, so... To start off with, right, because uh, we said we were going to do this at the end of the last, uh, at the end of last video, before I did that message. So, up, what's up right now should be footage of Frozen Base Act 1, because I said I had to go back and play that one. And, yeah, it's, it's a level. I have, I don't even think I have more to say for it. Uh, for Trip Story, which I'll get to in a bit. Uh, it's it's there. Uh, it was just like a lot of the other levels in the game. Real fun. The boss fight at the end was... A boss fight. Again, that's another thing that is m way more prevalent in Trip Story. But yeah, that is actually what we're here for. This is uh, Trip's story, or just Trip in general being summarized for this part. So I did, in fact, play through Trip's story and the final story. So let's just start with uh, just a general reminder. Her name is, uh, the new character's name is Trip the Sun Gazer. She's a Sun Gazer lizard. Lives on North Star. I think they have uh, some legends about them being dragons, so her, her role in the story makes sense. So yeah, for the main story, she's she starts off on Eggman's side. Uh, no doubt because they probably pulled something like with Knuckles, just convinced her that they were villains here to do something. Or contracted her um, for navigation on the islands, because she is native to these islands, I believe. And uh, as you saw in the main story, uh, after spending some time with Amy in Lagoon City Zone, or what was it? Yeah, it was Lagoon City Zone. She becomes friends with Amy. And then subsequently turns on Eggman and specifically Fang at the end of the zone after that, that being Golden Capital. So yeah, and then she becomes part of the group. Well, part of the group uh, story-wise after that, she becomes part of the group actually at the end of the main story where you can finally play as her. And she also takes her uh, armor off in that Golden Capital cutscene as well. Which And then uh, she turns super and flies through, I think, the prototype for Fang's mech, which we'll, we'll get back to. That is very much like Knuckles, in that they are mainly there to cause problems for you until they realize something's wrong with the person they've sided with and uh, subsequently turn on them. Um, after the main story, she gets her own story again, like Knuckles, uh, and also like Knuckles from Sonic 3 and Knuckles specifically, hers, her story is just a hard mode version of the main story. So for her story, it, uh, I keep saying it's like Knuckles from Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but it legitimately is. Uh, Eggman's robots come back, uh, wake back up, uh, and act on their own and can basically continue the work that Eggman was doing despite the fact that he was long since folded and has gone on to something else. In fact, uh, her her story is a lot like Knuckles's in Sonic 3, except for Sonic Superstar's case, they throw a, a shit ton more obstacles at you, like spikes. But that's not exactly what we're here for as of right now. It's going to be in the next few minutes that I get back to that. Um, and then finally... Um, she does, in fact, play a, a role in the last story. I'll elaborate more on that next part. But she is important for that story, to say the least. Um, not as important as something with barely any buildup and not that many scenes to it at all uh, will be. Um, so yeah, that's, that's her story roles. Um... Now to move on to gameplay, something that I actually might be able to f talk about with a level of consistency. Um, so, like I said, uh, Trips is just is like Knuckles' 
uh, story in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. It's the hard mode of the game. So they have a lot more things like spikes, they have a lot more enemies placed everywhere, and because of how she's built, uh, sh they also just straight remove a lot of platforms and, and things that were in the original stage. And this is all to take advantage of her moveset. So she's essentially like multiple characters matched together. A lot of her normal, like general feel is a lot like Sonic. She has a similar running animation and just like general, I guess general look to her is a lot more Sonic-like. She has a double jump like Amy. What, she's, what she actually is, if I remember correctly, is more like the Chaotix. Uh, especially with Vector, because she shares the same jump animation as him from Chaotix. Uh, but she can climb walls, and in her super form, she, uh, which you saw in the main story, she can fly. Uh, and she can also shoot fire, which is uh, something she can also do in her base form by using the extra ability. Uh, which she can use all those emerald powers, I feel like that was obvious but I should probably have still said it anyway um, yeah so she can climb walls she has a double jump um, she can fly under super state and her extra ability is basically the Mar Super Mario Brothers uh, fire flower ability so those are her abilities and her moveset. Uh, so like I said, uh, the levels are kind of built around that type of stuff specifically. Um, they have way more enemies, so be careful. They have way more spikes. Um, they do just remove some platforms, again, to take advantage of a wall climbing ability. And there are a bunch of other obstacles added to her stages, like... Uh, Golden Capital specifically, there's a lot more of those weird pillar platforms that you mainly saw in Knuckles' stage. Uh, especially in this version of it. Uh, so for context, uh, her story is every single act. You have to play through every single act uh, of the main game. But they're changed to be harder and changed to be something that only she could get through. Uh, and I do mean all of them. So that means that a lot of the uh, that means that all of the uh, zones that have character-specific acts that were optional in the in the in the main game uh, now have three acts like Sonic One. And uh, it's not even like Sonic One where there was only a boss at the end of the third act. There are bosses at the end of every act except for the ones that were originally character-specific. So instead of fight, fighting one boss per zone, you're fighting two per zone most of the time. Again, it, it uh, ones that were already a single zone uh, are still singular, like a single act. They were already they're they're still singular. So stages like Sky Temple or Sand Sanctuary, they're still and and Cyber Station, they're all still one act. Uh, still harder though, and because they're all one act, uh, they're longer than usual, like, than, than the usual act is, so in some cases they could be worse, uh, than most other stages, so yeah, they add a bunch of stuff, um, one of the most notable changes is that egg robos are there, again, like Knuckles' story in Sonic 3, um, and there is an egg robo that will spawn, I, th I think, in every level. But there were some levels where I went by its section too fast for it to matter. Where it's in the background, so you can't kill it. And it will just shoot at you. So, you not only are there more enemies, but you have to constantly be moving. Because if you aren't, you will get shot in certain spots. Um... So I believe that's all, all everything about the levels in general. Um, boss fights also do get harder for all levels, but, you know, that was kind of obvious. Uh, 
it does make some of them real hell though but then some of them uh, don't change but that that since we talked about that uh, let's move on to bosses so trips trip story is the hard mode so every single boss is harder whether that means taking more hits like most of the bosses in the story uh or uh adding things to its original attack pattern like the frozen base act one boss fight as trip that boss throws more bombs than it did in frozen base act one and those are a problem uh because both in the original frozen base act one and in trips if you get hit you by those you're most likely falling into a pit and dying um so yeah that took a bit um but eventually i did get past that now the for the most part they're just adding more hits or adding more things to their uh to their move sets already in some cases like i believe cyber station and golden capital the bosses are basically unchanged uh, which is good because those bosses take way, 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 way too long. Uh, both in the main game and in um, Trip Story. Uh, now, in the main game, there was uh, there was a very real chance that it was just because it was our first time doing it and we were playing multiplayer. We tend to not really think as hard as we should when we play multiplayer games. But after playing Trip Story, uh, a lot of the later bosses, it was just uh a lot like it was just it was made clear that they were just oh way too long and had way too much going on so i have here in my notes that i should be telling uh tips about some of the bosses that i learned um i don't exactly have many of them uh you saw how to deal with a lot of them uh in the main story but for something like cyber station because we were so trash at it and it's only one act. Uh, we didn't exactly go back to play it. So I, when I went back to play Trip Story, I actually got to play those boss fights again. So for something like Cyber Station, uh, one tip that I have is this might work in the main game. It might not. But when that robot goes to do that dash attack, once it has that like rocket booster pack on it, if you if it flies over you, you can jump directly into it to deal damage. So you combine that with all the other ways to deal damage. That fight actually, it's still hard, but it, it shouldn't take all that long. Uh, it definitely should be much shorter than the 30 minutes it took for us to finish that fight in our multiplayer playthrough. Um, Golden Capital's boss fight is largely the same as in that, um, as in the main story. The only thing about it is that just be smart with it. You don't have to bum rush anything. Just wait for your chance to hit them. It's going to take like two minutes minimum, but you'll it it is not going to be hard. It just should just be boring uh, if you play it smart. And um, yeah, other than that, a lot of them weren't all that different, other than hit points. Uh, again, besides the frozen base one, but I don't exactly have any tips for that. I think, from what I understand from playing that as much as I did, I think when it shoots bombs, it alternates what which level it'll be shooting them on. I think there are some that are just going to be random regardless, but most of them will switch planes. So, like, the first one could be bottom, and then the next one is top. So, you might want to change which level of platform you're on between each one if you survive the first one. Um, and also you can kill the thing, the little flying thing that it shoots out of its mouth. Um, so that's for the, the main bosses. There wasn't really much to say because most of them get harder through hit points and not exactly changing their strategy. And even if they did, Trip's moveset allows you to get more height with a double jump like Amy, so she's fundamentally broken for a lot of boss fights. No, the one that, that really needs to never be touched again is her final boss. So the, the final boss of the main story of Sonic Superstars is already 
way too long. But Trip's final boss is basically that, but with uh, most of its attacks being instant kill and the terrain on the floor being uneven. So it'll be on the screen right now. But to describe it, phase one, you're fighting Fang and he's on his uh, floating ship, floating vehicle. I forget what it was called and I don't care enough to look at it. Um, and he'll start it off by shooting lasers at you. That's the attack that's going to be in between both uh, phases where you can hit him. So spend 14 seconds, I repeat 14 seconds, shooting uh, lasers, not lasers, shooting missiles at you. And you, you can, they're easy to dodge. There's no reason you should really be getting hit by them unless you get screwed over by where you start trying to run so like basically trying to run up a slope or something um yeah if you don't get screwed by that in momentum you should be able to just run in one direction and just jump whenever he shoots rockets and you'll be good so he has two attacks other than that in this phase and in both of these attacks you can damage him while he's doing the first attack is one that involves the instant kill lasers that he was shooting at Sonic during his uh, during his standalone speed jungle act. You know those gold diamond things that have pink lasers in them. Yeah, that. And um, so he has three at the start, but close to the end of phase one, he'll have like seven or eight, and he'll always shoot one to act as like a barrier. So that essentially means that you can you cannot move backwards and you uh, only have a certain amount of time uh, distance to move forward before you can before you hit that laser and die because it's instant kill. The rest of the lasers he will he will rotate towards you and you have to dodge them. If it was on flat terrain, this would be pretty easy, um, but it's a little bit harder than that with the sloped terrain. Um, it's not too much harder, especially with the tip that I'm about to share with you, but it, it is a lot harder. Well, it is a bit harder, I mean. Uh, so the tip for that I have is that if you stay around, how would I put this? If you stay around, like, a, if you stay around... What's a good distance? If you stay around like a slope's distance away from him, pretty much at all times, uh, you should be able to just jog forward and you'll and no miss. And then after the last one uh, passes you, you should have enough time to go full tilt and hit him. Just don't be too close to him after you hit him, because you will take damage. Um, and then the second attack is... He will spawn clones of himself, and they will fly in different patterns for two sets. So he'll, it'll be, there'll be five. It'll be four clones and him. They will take off in a random order. Well, random. And they'll take off in a different order uh, in groups of three or two. So basically two waves. And your job is to remember where the real fang is and dodge the copies when they try to hit you and then the goal ideally is to hit the real fang on his way down to shorten the, f the attack uh, by the way if you miss either of these you're back to waiting you have to wait for that attack phase to be over then you have to wait the 14 seconds with the missiles and then you have to deal with the waiting for the next attack phase because he will continuously cycle through them whether you hit him or not so he'll do those in that order you know, missiles start first, then the laser attack, then the missiles again, then the copy attack. And he'll keep cycling through that till you get, I think, six, seven hits. Um, and both of them get more... Well, both of them get more difficult as that phase goes on. Uh, specifically the laser one, just because of how many more there are. After that, he will... 
appear in the finalized version of his version of the Death Egg Robot. And it's this one, see in concept this one doesn't sound nearly as hard, but then in execution it is beyond hard because um, this one has a bunch of different ways to damage it. It has a, a bunch of different attacks. So let's just start with the first thing that you'll probably see. The first thing you'll probably see is him spitting out these weird... What would they... Are they like mantis uh, robots or something? Or ant robots? Whatever they are. They're little robot bug robots on wheels. Um, that one's pretty easy. They'll fly up from the bottom of the screen after they're shot uh, super slow. And so that's your cue to hit them on the... Uh, when they start falling, and then uh, they'll damage Fang. By the way, this does still work like the main story boss, where you do have to be moving around the boss, because it'll deflect anything in front of it, so you gotta hit it in the back of its head. Alright, after that, we'll get to the main problem with this boss fight, which is the in-between uh, phase. Again, like the first phase, there's an in-between phase, but that one unlike the missiles, which were easy to dodge and did damage to you normally if you didn't dodge them. This one, he spawns blue electric uh, net traps that don't hurt you, but they will catch you and hold you in place. You have to mash the jump buttons as hard as you can to get out of them. If you don't, uh, he will shoot quirks at you. Well, he'll shoot quirks at you whether you get caught in them or not. And if those quirks hit you, it's an instant kill. Uh, so I do have some tips for that. Um, so for the laser, for the for the net things. Okay, so one of my tips for this part is it's easier at the start of phase two. It's easier to get caught by one of the. Uh, electric nets and then just escape from it and dodge the quirks like that mainly because if you don't do that he will spawn more of them and it will just generally the fight will take longer doing it like that oh yeah and also i need to mention you should mash both the jump buttons it also makes it easier but if you get caught and then escape from it he'll only shoot out that one set of of what basically electro webs uh and he'll shoot quirks at you and then he'll immediately move to the next phase so that's just a way to expedite that process at toward the end of phase two it is a lot easier for you to be dodging them just because of how it's aimed at you um you'll recognize it if you can see it on the screen or if you play the fight uh whenever there's only one net that's directly aimed at you just keep running uh if you want to you can slow down or stop so that he doesn't completely engulf the entirety of the arena in them because this does loop like it is like a circular arena you are moving in a circle so if you move too fast you'll end up getting caught in one that he shot in the beginning and that could kill you um so yeah, that's just about all my tips for the boss in general. After that, there's another way to damage him, which is he'll shoot barrels out of his shoulders. And uh, when those barrels hit the ground that you're on, they will explode into green orbs and red orbs. I think they're bombs. And you hit the green bombs back at him, and you just avoid the red bombs. My tip for that one would be keep moving as uh keep moving uh when those bombs appear because the last thing you want is to try to hit a green one and then hit a red one they also affect each other so it's just a lot easier to just try to dodge them uh and then event and then uh hit a green one on the way while not trying to die um and then after that he really only has one attack after that which is only introduced when he has two hits left and he'll hit both of his fists on the ground on either side of him, deleting those platforms uh, and sending you into the air. So those become pits and you can die from those. Um, and then directly in the middle, he will slam his head down on the ground. That becomes a pit that can kill you. 
and all that should be left is like four platforms on either side of his head. From there, you should hit, be able to hit him. It's not exactly a big deal if you can't, because he doesn't exactly do that attack often. Um, like I've only ever had him do it once or twice. Um, but just be aware, because of the way that the terrain is sloped, it's very possible that when he slams his hand down onto it, the slope will come down far enough that you could still get hit by the spikes on his wrists. And that is basically a guaranteed death because of the knockback that damage does in a classic Sonic game. Um, so yeah. Explaining it, it sounds real short and easy. In, as you could probably see on the screen, or if you, especially if you've played the boss. The execution makes it so much, it's, it's not easy at all. Just to put this into perspective, I've recorded Trip's uh, story in two sessions. Um, the second session where I finished her story was five hours long. And four... Yeah, four of those hours, essentially, were me fighting that boss fight. Um, so yeah, not great. Oh, oh! Uh, another tip, right? Because of the slopes, uh, if you somehow end up with uh, him about to shoot corks at you, and you had to slow down, or no, if you had to get caught in one of the uh, nets, and the only thing below you is a downward slope, use that to your advantage. Roll down one way, and then double jump the other way. Uh, by the time you're on the ground, you can get enough speed that you just can outrun the quirks after like the first or second one. Um, so yeah, that's just about all the tips I have for uh, that f um, story. In general, just like the main story, it only really truly falls apart for me with the second half's boss fights. Specifically the last one. That last one was not it at all uh, and it, even with the insta kill attacks that boss is just like the main story boss where I like it until you realize that it takes like 16 minutes uh, like let's just say you get a hit per minute which is actually really likely if you're doing it perfectly um, that's it takes 15 hits so that's a 15 minute boss fight if you're doing it perfectly if you capitalize on every single uh attack chance and i just don't think a boss should be that long final or otherwise uh, i don't think a stage should be that long either um but in general the trip story is how i feel about the main story but a lot more drastic uh, fine at the start, uh, becomes way too bloated at the end. Um, but still like her as a character, though. And, uh, I hope she comes back in the next 2D game. Or even becomes part of the main cast. At least for Classic Sonic. Um, we, I doubt we'd ever see her as anything more than, like, a cameo in the modern series, if that even. So, yeah. That was uh, the summary of Trip's story, and all in all, I think it was nice until the end. And honestly, it's just like the main story. I wouldn't mind playing a lot of those stages again. Uh, so yeah, that's just about it with this. Uh, so next video will be about the true final boss of Sonic Superstars. That's going to be real short. So yeah, I'll, I'll see you next part.